In a previous video, we gave Jody a new gear knob. It looks very nice, but it makes the rest of the interior look pretty scruffy by comparison. The horn press is very badly cracked. The indicator switch shroud looks as if it's been brush painted with black paint. The chrome indicator stalk's also been painted black, and the end's been broken off at some point and glued back on again with super glue. The glove box lining is stained and torn. The top of the dash looks as if it's been brush painted. The glove box door's not much better, it's got chips and scratches on it. And the speedometer trim area is in a terrible state. The chrome wings are badly corroded. The aluminium trim panel is oxidised and there's a black mark to the top right as if somebody was thinking of drilling a hole and changed their mind. There's a nasty scratch on the left hand side and for some reason the windscreen washer push is missing. And like many cars there are key ring marks around the ignition switch. Now to remove everything. First we'll disconnect the battery. Always remove the earthed terminal first. If you touch the bodywork with the spanner, it doesn't matter because it's all earthed anyway. Now the other terminal. It doesn't matter if you touch the body because there's no earth to complete the circuit. But don't do it the other way round. The next step is to remove the steering wheel and that starts with the horn press. That should pop out quite easily, it's just a friction fit. The steering wheel is held on with a nut. Most people remove that using a screwdriver and a hammer. How many times do I have to tell you the right tool for the right job? The right tool is a three-quarter inch Whitworth box spanner. There's a hole in here to put a bar through, but uh, I've lost the bar. And anyway, I think you can get a much better grip by putting a dirty great spanner on the other end. That's coming off quite easily. If it doesn't, you might need to get somebody to hold the wheel. You may even need to soak it overnight in penetration oil. And off she comes. And you can see the big chunks there where somebody's tried to take it off with a hammer and chisel. Now we should be able to jiggle the wheel off. If it's a really tight fit, make sure it doesn't fly up suddenly and smack you in the nose. You might want to leave the nut on until you get it loosened a little bit. Now we can remove the indicator switch cover. There are three screws, uh, bottom, top and left hand side. You may need to bend the cover slightly to get it to come free. The driver's side glove box cover is held in place with three screws, one in the top and two in the bottom. The bottom two have washers, so take care not to lose them. And it's a good idea to keep all your parts in a tray, preferably labelled. Next I remove the indicator switch to give a bit more room to get the glove box cover out. The indicator switch is held in with a couple of screws and we'll just let it hang down gently on the wire. Now we've got a bit more space, we can remove the glove box cover. We can also remove the four screws holding the inner liner. That's uh, top and bottom left and top and bottom right. And with a bit of a juggle we can get the liner out. I'm not being too careful with this because it's going in the bin anyway. The left hand glove box cover is very similar, it's held in with four screws, two on the right and two on the left. The speedometer is held in by two hidden screws, one on the left and one on the right. They're much easier to see once it's been dismantled. We just need to loosen them, they don't need to be removed completely. Now, with a bit of a jiggle, we ought to be able to get the speedometer out. Once it's loose, we'll find that the main thing holding it is the speedometer cable. So we'll unscrew that, and then we'll disconnect all the wires. If you're not sure where all the wires go, it's best to take a photograph. Next off are the chrome trim pieces. These are held from inside the dash with three nuts. Or in our case, two nuts. You can loosen them off with a 4BA spanner. Once you've got them off, you should find you have six washers 
six lock washers, and six nuts. Well, good luck with that. If anybody's taken it off previously, they've almost certainly lost some of them inside the dash. Next off is the choke cable. We can loosen the wire with a 5BA spanner and a screwdriver. Don't lose the connector. And the clip that holds the sleeve, we just pop that off with a pair of pliers. Inside the dash, the choke cable is held in place with a nut and a lock washer. If we loosen those off, we can then pull out the choke cable fairly easily. Don't lose the nut and the washer. And now we can remove the switches. We shouldn't need to disconnect the wiring, we just need to take off the chrome rings on the front and push them through. The chrome rings have got slots in them, so you can take them off with a hammer and a screwdriver. The right tool for the right job. And these are the right tools for the job. They're not really car tools, you're more likely to find them in an electronics catalogue. And next, we'll remove the indicator switch, which is still where we left it, hanging under the steering column. The wires go up inside the dashboard. Instead of unplugging the wires, we'll cut the cable. We're going to throw it away anyway, and also, leaving this tub of cable there gives us a useful indication for fitting the new switch. We just need to copy the colours. The wire goes down and underneath the steering column clamp, which is a bit tight, so we may need to slacken that off just a little bit to get the old wire out. And that's the end of part one. Thanks for watching. In the next video, we'll refurbish everything and we'll put it all back together again.